President Biden and his family are huddling together in Delaware after a jury convicted his surviving son on all three federal gun charges. It is the first time in American history that an immediate family member of a sitting U.S. president was convicted of a crime. Now, the moment, of course, creates the split screen of conservatives who just 12 days ago were slamming the rule of law, slamming the judge, the jury, and the verdict in Donald Trump's Manhattan trial. Some even claimed the conviction was the end of the Republicans, we know it. But tonight, they seem to be singing from a completely different tune. This is a new era in America, and I think it goes against the ilk of who we are as Americans and our faith in the criminal justice system. In the end, this juror, jury of ordinary uh, people from Delaware were not intimidated by that family, and they recognized that this was a clear-cut case and that clearly no one's above the law. This is a very political exercise and you have to say that it accomplished what it set out to accomplish. But I would say this about Judge Noreka. I think she ran a very fair courtroom. She ran a very fair trial. I guess we all need, what, to shop at Banana Republic from now on? Because that's what it feels like. Yeah, a Banana Republic. For years, the Bidens have been able to escape any legal accountability for their sleazy, corrupt conduct. But today, their luck ran out. At least hunters did. Power is all they love. And they're willing to do anything to cling to it. They're willing to destroy the rule of law. The Republic has been wounded by weak lawyers and talentless political bloodhounds. It gave me a little boost of confidence in the American legal system, although they still have a lot of work to do to win me back. I believe that there was a, a conscious collusion of allies that came together it's pretty obvious with a private strategy to eliminate a common shared adversary. Hunter's going to jail, so Joe doesn't have to. Uh, and when he comes out, he'll be rewarded for his loyalty, like a made man in a Biden crime family. This is a distraction from, from the influence peddling and the, and the kickbacks. Yes, these are two different trials under very different circumstances. Hunter Biden was federal. Trump's was not. The crimes and the evidence all completely different. But you can't claim the justice system is dead because of a single conviction while also praising it for another. And you can't claim President Biden is weaponizing the Justice Department to go after his enemies when that same department just convicted his own son. But in a world of MAGA, perhaps you can. Prominent conservatives are trading baseless conspiracies for another. Now they're claiming that Hunter Biden's trial was a sham to give cover to Biden. Charlie Cook Kirk says the Democrats will use the conviction to claim that the system is fair. Vivek Ramaswamy, he calls it a smokescreen to deflect attention from Biden's other crimes. Republican Senator Tom Cotton says it's a way to insulate Joe Biden, who is guilty of corruption. Trump's campaign calls the case a distraction from the, quote, Biden crime family. Now, remember, this is the same Biden that conservatives claim can't walk, can't talk or think on his own. But just so we're clear, Biden has no power over a state-level prosecution. But the same federal government that he actually runs just prosecuted his own son. And the system we're supposed to believe is rigged? That just makes no sense. We're going to get to all of that in a moment. But first, tonight, joining me now is Reverend Dr. Christopher Bullock. He is a spiritual advisor to the Biden family and the pastor at Canaan Baptist Church in Newcastle, Delaware. Uh, Reverend, thank you for being with us. It's good to be with you, Abby. God bless you. Thank you for having me. Thank you for being here. You spoke last night, or before this verdict, I should say, with Hunter Biden, how was he when you last spoke with him? He was upbeat, he was positive, and, but he understood the gravity of the situation and the nature uh, of the trial. So he is well aware of what uh, the possibilities were and certainly disappointed in the verdict. However, things did not go in his favor does not mean that the favor of God is not upon him. We believe that his faith is strong. Uh, of course, his family is strong and with him. And I encouraged him to look to the hill from which cometh his help, all of his help coming from the Lord. But he's focused, and uh, we know that 
things are going to work out in the end. You know, um, Hunter Biden has talked about his addiction. He's talked about uh, what that has been like for his life. But I wonder, on this particular issue, uh, the set of issues that he was charged and has now been convicted of, has he ever expressed remorse for what led to all of this? I believe that he's aware of every step of his journey, and remorse is a part of the process. Uh, therefore, he is prepared to move forward knowing that uh, God is a forgiving God. He has said in his own words that he has hurt people along the way. But we know that the power of prayer, the power of family, the power of faith can change him and any situation. Listen, Abby, this addiction issue is a disease. It's impacted millions of Americans, uh, regardless of race, creed, or color, PhD, no D, GD, MD, JD. This disease is real. And we know that it's a journey and it's a season in his life. And this season uh, will hopefully end in uh, a way in which weeping endure for a night, but joy will come in the next season. Mm. CNN spoke earlier today with one of the jurors <clears throat> in this case, juror number 10. I want to play for you what he said about the defense. I felt, I felt bad that they put Naomi on trial on, as witness. Um, I, I think that was probably a strategy that should not have been done. Um, no, no daughter should ever have to testify or against her dad. You know this family well. Was it a mistake for the defense to put Hunter's own daughter through that? I think they had to uh, make some critical decisions. Uh, they had a particular strategy, and they were going for what would work for them, what would give them uh, favor in the face of the jury and all the judge and all who are concerned. It was painful, uh, but we understand that the defense had a strategy. They believe it would work, and uh, we know that this family, again, has gone through, is going through a lot, and at the end of the day, it's all about what's in the best interests of Hunter and the Biden family. Mm -hmm. We saw those emotional images of President Biden hugging his only surviving son. Can you tell us what this has been like for him going through uh, this trial, a different kind of trial uh, compared to some of the other trials that he's gone through in his life with the loss of his late wife and uh, several of his other children? Our president, my friend and brother, is a man of resilience, a man of deep faith, uh, a man who understands the hand of God when God's hand moves in his life. And he has said that uh, let justice uh, play out and whatever the decision was of the jury, he would respect and accept the decision. But when I saw him come home tonight and embraced his son, I saw the power of love. And let me say this, Abby, uh, love is greater than politics. Uh, uh, the Bible says love is the more excellent way. Love endureth all things, believes all things. Love is patient, love is kind. And the scripture talks about that Nothing can separate us from the love of God. So the love of God is in that family. Our president and our first lady, they love Hunter, and we love him. And we will continue to walk alongside him with the ministry of presence. My role has been the pastor of presence in the courtroom. Mm -hmm. uh, we prayed three times in the courtroom. We brought the church house to the courthouse. We prayed openly. We prayed, we hugged, and he knows the power of prayer. And God always has the last word. And I just think something good is going to come out of this in the end. And God will use this moment for his glory on his own time. Reverend Dr. Christopher Bullock, thank you very much for sharing all of that with us. 
God bless you. Thanks for having me, Abby.